Hi, I'm Dr. Surekha Tiwari. I'm a psychological counselor and a homeopathic consultant. And I have been in Bangalore for the last 25 years, in this profession for the last 35 years. It's been a beautiful journey. First of all, I greet all my viewers on the World Homeopathy Day, 10th of April, which happens to be the birthday of the founder of homeopathy, Dr. Samuel Henneman. Personally, I have been a homeopath for the last 35 years and have absolutely marveled at this beautiful science. I've studied, I have analyzed, I have seen so many successful cases with such gentle cure that it's a beautiful way of life. Try and see for yourself, try and go to homeopathy yourself and feel what I'm trying to say. Now the first myth about homeopathy is that homeopathy is slow acting. If you have to cover the journey from the root to the last branch of the tree, it's a journey. But if you just have to pluck a leaf out of the tree, it's the second's job. Homeopathy deals with any ailment from its grassroot level, right from the inception of the disease to the last manifestation of the disorder. Homeopathy can deal with all of it. Contrary to popular belief, it is not a slow acting remedy, it is actually a thorough acting remedy. It will make sure that whatever is eradicated is done permanently. And for that, you require a little more time than maybe a paracetamol will bring down your fever in two hours. If the throat problem is not addressed or if the stomach issue is not addressed, the fever comes back. Homeopathy will take six hours to bring the fever down, taking along with it the throat condition also and the stomach condition also. So homeopathy is more thorough. It is not slow acting. Often I've heard people ask me that if I'm taking homeopathy, can I take the other medications that I'm taking? My simple answer to this is, homeopathy works on the organism. You as an individual, what you call technically as immunity, your disease fighting power, that is what homeopathy empowers. It is not going to fight with the bacteria or the virus. We do not have an antibiotic in our science. We have medicines to empower the body, to make sure that the body itself can fight the bacteria and invasion or the viral impact. So all the medication which you are taking along with homeopathy, like for diabetes, like for blood pressure, they have no contraindication to be taken with homeopathy. This is a myth. All the indicated remedies which you are taking, you should. But if you are taking homeopathy for fever, try not to take too many paracetamols or antibiotics otherwise because you're using two different methods for the same ailment. That's where the contradiction is. So for the same ailment, try not to take. And the homeopaths of the Neo world who have been educated the last few years, they understand that you need to keep things under control and yet you can treat the basic cause. Both the things go hand in hand. When we use the word herbal, we things like flowers and leaves and bark and roots, Herbs are only one part of the homeopathic spectra. Homeopathy draws its medicines from the animal kingdom, from the plant kingdom, from even the mineral kingdom. If you can believe me, the common sand under your feet is the very important medicine in homeopathy called silica. The common salt on your table is also a medicine which is known as natremure in homeopathy. So homeopathy is not herbal alone. Homeopathy is anything which is from natural sources where the natural resource has been potentized, a process through which the latent powers of the substance have been arisen and they are helpful in treating individuals. So herbs are only one part of homeopathic resources. An acute condition medically is described where the organism has been overpowered for the time being in which the fever is suddenly rising too high, the vomitings are being very bad, the diarrhea is immense. In such cases, homeopathy works like magic. I have yet to see a diarrhea, I have yet to see a wheeze, I have yet to see a sneezing episode. Even homeopathy deals with conditions like epileptic syndromes. But homeopathic medicine would require a certain degree of information from the past a certain degree of information about the reason why the episode is happening. Otherwise, homeopathy works for acute condition 
even more beautifully because after the acute condition is over, the after effects of the medicines are not to be dealt with. So it is a gentler form of a permanent cure. The other reason I have seen in a lot of cases where people come to me and tell me I'm taking homeopathy and I've not eaten garlic for the last six months. Or somebody will say, oh, I, I can't take homeopathy because my doctor will ask me to stop smoking. <laughs> or my doctor will stop my alcohol and I can't do without my evening drink. Although as a doctor, I should not be saying so. You can go ahead and smoke or you can go ahead and drink. But homeopathy is not a contradiction to your lifestyle. It actually enhances your lifestyle. On a lighter note, if you drink, homeopathy will help your liver sustain it. <laughs> if you smoke, homeopathy can help your lungs sustain it longer. You can enjoy your smoke a little longer. But these things will catch up. But having said that, the dietary restrictions are only because of your condition. It's not a roller coaster or a road roller medication where you do whatever you want to do and I'm going to stop your diarrhea even after you've had a bad meal. No. Homeopathy works on the natural forces with the natural forces. So the natural forces should not be suppressed with bad food, bad conditions. So the restrictions will only come regarding your health conditions, whichever you're having. Let's say for example, you're running asthma and there's an acute summer condition and the person will come and say, can I have cold water? Now I know if you have a cold water drink, you can always constrict your pipes and your pipes are already constricted. In that condition, yes, I'm going to hold you for bringing cold water but not forever, during the time when you are sick, not when you're taking homeopathy. So the restrictions are related to your condition, not because of the medicine. The other very commonly asked question and very, very big myth with homeopathy is that because these medicines are sweet, diabetics should not be taking it. But if I go into the details, it'll become a very long lecture. The first thing is the diabetes is not only about sugar, it's about calories. And so anybody who's listening to me right now who's a diabetic himself, do not look at just the intake of sugar. Also look at the amount of calories you're taking because diabetics is the extra calories put away in a not so healthy form. The sugar tablets are actually not made of anything apart from sugar of milk. If a glass of milk to a diabetic without sugar is given, you say he can take it, out of that milk is formed these tablets. They are basically small tablets which are made. In a few cases, even sugar cane tablets are used. Those tablets do not create diabetes and then the homeopathic tablets are so minuscule in their size that there's hardly any introduction of sugar into the system. The interface of homeopathic medicine with your body is your tongue. So these tablets dissolve on the tongue and that's the end of them. The nerve endings on the tongue are the ones which are responsible for the stimulation got from the homeopathic medication. They do not react with the sugar cells, they do not obstruct your insulin, they do not increase your sugar levels. Trust me on that. Thank you all for this lovely time and patient listening and I congratulate all of you once again on the World Homeopathy Day.